So in our previous videos, we talked about different types of data and how that impacted the type of data analytics that you were going to do. So let's talk about the types of data analytics. The rest of the videos we have are really going to cover all these different types of data analytics and you're going to do them, uh, practice them, interpret the results. So when it comes to data analytics, there are five areas of data analytics. There is descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, prescriptive, and the newest one is cognitive. So let's start uh, and go in the order of complexity. So the simplest, the easiest um, is descriptive analytics. And when we look at descriptive analytics and diagnostic analytics, they are describing the past. Whereas predictive, prescriptive, and cognitive are about the future. So we talk about descriptive analytics. We are talking about what is happening. So your descriptive statistics, remember your mean, median, mode uh, that you've learned about, that is describing what is happening. Where does the data tend to congregate? How much does it vary? You've learned already in your stats about inferential statistics. Those are your hypothesis tests. Is there a relationship between these variables? If one person feels one way about something, how do they feel about this other issue? Are they related? Uh, does one group um, have the same height as another group? Uh, does one type of plant have the same characteristics as another type of plant? So our hypothesis tests, our inferential statistics is describing what is happening. And we can summarize this information with data visualizations, with graphs. We can turn this information into dashboards to summarize what's happening. We can also look at descriptive statistics or descriptive analytics, uh, particular to the source of data. So in our previous videos, we have looked at sources of data, uh, databases, text, and um, when it comes to and spatial data, audio, images, and so on. And so as we look at describing what is happening, we can use web analytics to describe who is visiting our website uh, and uh, what we know about them, where are they from, how much time do they spend, that type of thing. So that's web analytics. And then we also have reality mining. So we're describing what is happening uh, based on geographic information. So tracking movement, describing where people are going, uh, the relationship between events and people in space. Not space way out there, but in space as in your house, the grocery store, longitude, latitude, maps, uh, that's reality mining, describing what's happening. So descriptive is the least complex and provides the least amount of competitive advantage. So as we get into these higher levels, that's where the big data, the machine learning, the AI comes in. Because they're more complex, we need the equipment to be able to do the analysis. So then we look at diagnostic analytics. Diagnostic analytics, we're trying to explain why something happened. And so when we look at try to explain why something happened, we can analyze text, we can analyze uh, Twitter posts, we can analyze reviews that are posted on our, our website or provided to our company. We're trying to get an idea about sentiment, how people feel, because perhaps their feelings explain why they are buying from us, not buying from us, why they're watching our TikTok video or not. Uh, so we're, we're trying to get an idea of people's feelings and sentiment to explain and tie their behavior. We can also look at social network analysis. So this is how people uh, interact with each other. So if we think about building a network, I talk to you, you talk to someone else, we have this relationship, we share information, uh, that social network, we can look at the ties between uh, entities, between people to help explain why certain groups feel the way they do. 
why an idea might be spreading. So if we have a large network where we're all interconnected, we all chat, we all share things, then we might have common uh, feelings about things, uh, common perspectives. And so social network analysis helps explain why things are happening by looking at our relationships. We have things like survival analysis. We see this in terms of um, bioinformatics, medical studies, looking at um, effectiveness of drugs and medical treatments. So we're trying to explain why certain people survive longer than others, why certain groups might be dying younger. And so survival analysis looks at treatments, different uh, medical protocols, different drugs uh, that might be impacting your quality of life or the length of your life. Uh, the other things that my face is currently hiding that you can't see here, just move me over for a second, uh, is enterprise analytics. So here we're using um, business analysis and tools in, uh, related to business operations to help understand why the business is performing the way that it is. And so we're going to look at um, the organizational structure, the hierarchy, the communication, but also we can look at the processes within the organization uh, and to help explain why the business is performing well or not well. So there are tools specific to uh, different contexts, right? Uh, survival to, to health sciences, enterprise to business, and then in general, as we do diagnostic analytics, we look at classification models. So this is a supervised machine learning approach where we have trained data. So we have labels attached. And so we can identify one group versus another to help us figure out uh, why one group bought and the other didn't, um, why really it's any kind of uh, classification. So it doesn't have to be yes, no. It can be any type of groups. And so why this group is happy and this group is not, um, why this group performed well and that one didn't. So any type of data where we have some kind of label, so a nominal data category, we can look at other variables that might help us identify why they fall into that category. That's what we're doing when it comes to diagnostic analytics. I'll just go back here. So we talked about descriptive and diagnostic. They're, they're talking about the past. This is what we talk about. We talk about business intelligence, lots of job postings right now for business intelligence. And it's to do and use these tools in descriptive and diagnostic analytics. Then we have predictive analytics where we're trying to look at what could happen. And we look at predictive analytics we're looking at forecasting models. We're looking at cluster analysis. So cluster analysis is unsupervised machine learning. The difference between supervised and unsupervised is supervised has a label. So we know what category they fall in and we can look at um, trying to figure out why they fall into a particular category. With cluster analysis, we don't know what category they fall in. We're trying to find the categories, find the groups, the cohorts. In marketing, we're trying to see, okay, here's all the people who buy from us. What does this group have in common? Let's call them group one. Maybe they're the frequent purchasers. Here's another group. What do they have in common? Uh, maybe they are the ones that um, buy pricey things. And so we're trying to find the groups, find the cohorts. We don't have the labels already. We're trying to see what people have in common. We can also use this to help us identify uh, different uh, clusters, different groups in science. You know, what is it that this one, that this group of plants has in common? What is it this group has in common? So trying to identify groups and what characteristics um, actually separate um, plants from each other, people from each other, uh, scenarios from each other. So can we identify different dispersed groups? We'll use predictive analytics to do recommendation engines. What should people buy? Which products should they try? Which Netflix video should you watch? Um, so this is a combination here of kind of all these different areas as we're looking at 
what people did in the past and um, how they feel with what could happen. So those people liked this movie, they liked this other movie, so other people would probably like the movie as well. So let's say, uh, okay, I've got to pick some movies off the top of my head. Um, all right, you like The Matrix? People who like The Matrix, I don't know, probably not. The people who like The Matrix also like Game of Thrones. So that means that if you have watched The Matrix, our recommendation engine says you should also watch the Game of Thrones, you're gonna like it. So they're predicting what could happen, you could like it, based on the fact that in the past, other people like the two together. Um, I don't know, maybe people who like The Matrix don't like Game of Thrones, maybe they're completely different personalities, in which case cluster analysis can help us find which combination of movies really go together and what other combination of movies really go together and which ones don't, Game of Thrones and The Matrix, maybe they don't go together. Uh, and it helps identify different cohorts of people, people who like this kind of movie, people who like this kind of movie. We can use predictive analytics to identify themes. So we're looking at analyzing text to see if we can identify general trends. If we can identify themes and people's statements, we can, we can then predict what's gonna happen. If people feel a certain way, if their statements are common with each other, then they're probably gonna have common behavior. And that's what we're looking for. So a lot of these techniques, we've put them here in a category. We've put them on the graph in a category, but they're really not tied to a specific area of analytics. Depending on how you use them, they could go in different spots. The key definition here is that you are descriptive analytics if the tool is being used to explain what happened. You are diagnostic analytics if the tool being used explains why something is happening. You are predictive analytics if the tool is being used to explain what could happen. And you are prescriptive analytics if you are explaining what should happen. So when we get to prescriptive analytics, there are more traditional non-machine learning, non-AI approaches, optimization, simulations, sensitivity analysis that look at what decisions we should make. And sensitivity analysis says, well, what if I have different assumptions? Does it change the recommended decision? So maybe the recommendation doesn't change at all. It's not very sensitive to our assumptions or maybe the optimal decision does change. So optimization, simulation, sensitivity analysis are more traditional prescriptive analytics that have existed before machine learning and AI. When we get to things like reinforced learning, reinforced learning uses artificial intelligence, machine learning to recommend the best process, the best steps, the best order of the steps to solve a problem. In business, we use reinforced learning a lot for logistics problems. What order should you drop off the packages? What order should you visit your customers? Um, it Reinforced learning is about finding the optimal order for the steps. Okay, and then we're also gonna look at neural networks. Neural networks are about finding patterns, predicting what could happen, what we should do, based on finding hidden relationships that aren't readily visible. And we're using big data where we have lots of different variables and there might be lots of relationships between variables. There might be lags that we don't know. So it's not an immediate relationship, but maybe it takes time. Uh, and so finding those patterns to help us figure out what we should do uh, going forward. So increase in complexity as we go into the future, as we're looking at what we should do, as we're looking at what, um, what could happen in the future, more complex, greater competitive advantage, because for our business in order to tell us what's the best solution, our organization what the best solution is, uh, gives us a greater advantage over just looking at the past. And if we go even further forward in complexity, we get to cognitive analytics. When you hear about generative AI, chat GPT, now what we're doing is we're collecting data about what's happened in the past. We're creating models to predict what could happen. 
we're prescribing potential solutions and we've automated that entire process so that when you ask ChatGPT to build you a menu, it's looking at historical menus, it's analyzing relationships between text, it's recommending that this word comes after the next word to build that menu for you, and then it's building you that solution about what you should do, here's what you should make for your dinner. So cognitive analytics, as we look at these large language modules, uh, generative AI that's creating images, um, like Midjourney and ChatGPT creating text and words, it is combining all of these together and it's fully automating the entire process. So we won't get into in these videos into cognitive um, AI, generative AI large language modules. We'll leave those for a future videos for another day. Uh, but our next couple of videos, we're going to be looking at how to do descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, and prescriptive analytics. So we started some of these videos talking about artificial intelligence and how big data is the next revolution. Uh, so let's make sure we, add, we know what artificial intelligence is. So artificial intelligence is a machine's ability to replicate how humans learn and how humans think. So cognitive functions and human learning. So essentially, we're just trying to simulate human behavior. We're outsourcing our work uh, to machines. Machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence where we're looking at pattern recognition and simulations. When we think of artificial intelligence, we often think of robotics. Machine learning itself isn't robotics, but when you combine machine learning with robots, uh, then you can have um, equipment that picks up a ball and moves it to a new location, tries to solve a, uh, a puzzle, right? It can use reinforced learning, for example, to find the best approach to solve the game. Uh, we can use robots that have sensors and webcams and heat sensors to detect information, use machine learning to find the patterns in that. Uh, to help us identify what uh, makes quality, what works well, what makes us more efficient. <laughs> Should the car drive forward? Should the car stop? Uh, is it detecting a, a stop sign? Um, so all of these are combinations of machine learning and robotics, which are all part of artificial intelligence. A subset of machine learning is deep learning or neural networks. And the idea here is to find the hidden layers, the unknown variables, and replicate the complexity of the brain. So when we are doing forecasting, if you're trying to forecast stocks, trying to predict behavior that's more complex, if you're trying to do image recognition, complex images, facial recognition, these are all going to be neural networks that um, are going to look for hidden connections that we can't detect unknown variables that we haven't collected. And so it's trying to replicate the complexity of the brain, not just human behavior. Now you'll see in this image, there's a second section here, over here, data analytics. And that's because when it comes to data analytics, it spans neural networks, machine learning, artificial intelligence. We talked before about supervised learning, unsupervised learning, we talked about reinforced learning, we talked about neural networks, all of this is in that AI uh, circle there. We also talked just a couple minutes ago about simulation and optimization, and how they're a bit more old school methods. And so data analytics is not just AI, we have those more traditional analytics methods. And so that's what lives out here in this section of the Venn diagram. So not artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, but still data analytics. And so over the next videos, we will discuss those too. Now, why should we use artificial intelligence and machines to help us make decisions? That's because humans can't process all the information and because humans suffer from bias. And so in our next, couple, our next video, because we'll stop this one here, uh, we'll look at why we should use machines to help us with data analytics.